Seven days and lots of Sonic games to 100%. I'm aware that there's like 8,000 2D Sonic titles on things like the Game Gear and Neo Geo Pocket Color, but I'm only counting the major releases. Because let's be honest, there's a small chance of fully completing what I have already. But I still have high hopes. Let's get this marathon cracking and see what happens. What's this? Sonic the Hedgehog in widescreen? My timer is blue now? What will science think of next? Yeah, I'm playing Sonic Origins for the four classic games simply because the life system is more fair and I can retry special stages as much as I want. In order to 100% Sonic the Hedgehog, I just need to find all six Chaos Emeralds. To do that, I need to hold 50 rings and jump through the big ring at the end of the stage. Despite finishing the 2D Mario Marathon recently, I was actually pretty hyped to play these games. I've recently played the 2D Sonic games casually, and almost all the ones I'm playing are great. Well, mostly. Despite playing this game and the others lots of times in the past, I wouldn't say that I've mastered them compared to 2D Mario. I've only ever 100% Sonic Mania. The other ones I've never fully beat, so I wasn't really sure what I was in for. One thing I can say for sure is that getting Chaos Emeralds in most of these games is completely counterintuitive to how I like playing them. This is Sonic, so obviously I want to play as fast and sloppy as possible. The ring system is an incredible mechanic because it allows me to do that. The fact that you can get hit as much as you want as long as you're holding at least one ring is genius. And because of that, getting 50 rings and then trying to not get hit by a spike or some enemy feels like a chore. I'm forced to play all these levels at walking speed. And because the stages are so big, it takes much longer to get through them. A lot of Sonic fans claim that Sonic games aren't meant to be played fast, but it's more about exploring the stages because of how multi-layered they are. And I can definitely attest to that to some extent, but that doesn't change the fact that special stages can be a pain to get. As for the Sonic 1 version of these stages, I mean, it's pretty iconic, but it hasn't really aged that well. You just kind of bounce around and pray that you get the emerald. But that's why I'm playing the Sonic Origins version, since I can use coins to retry special stages if I make any mistakes. But anyway, I was moving through the game at a snail's pace. I grabbed the last Chaos Emerald and could plow through the rest of the game, which is fine. I gotta be honest, Sonic 1 is just okay. The majority of the levels aren't very fun to play, even when you're going through it casually. I do love the music in every stage, and some of the bosses are great, but this game has aged about as well as Mario Bros. 1, which isn't saying much. But after a little over an hour, I took out the final boss and finished the game. What do I get for collecting all the Chaos Emeralds? This cool ending of Sonic pointing at me. Well, that was worth it. And also, Sonic 1 oh, took yeah. me 1 hour and 10 minutes. That's honestly a lot faster than I expected, because I tend to get stuck on special stages for a while. But up next is Sonic CD, of course. And at first, I was a little worried. I'm not very familiar with this game. I've only played through it like once or twice, and I've never tried to 100% it. In order to do that, you need to find all seven Time Stones. Yes, not Chaos Emeralds, Time Stones. They're totally different, guys, I swear. To get access to the special stages, again, I need to hold on to 50 rings and avoid getting hit until the end. In Sonic 1, that wasn't too bad because I've memorized most of the level layouts and the game itself is slower paced. That is not at all the case for Sonic CD. These levels are massive and you'll constantly get bounced around without any sort of control. So I thought that maybe I'd run into trouble, but it actually went smoother than I anticipated. Since you can still do one special stage per level and there's three levels per zone, I was able to knock out all the special stages at the beginning of the game, and the level design doesn't get too crazy until halfway through, so I didn't have too much of a struggle. The special stages for Sonic CD are some of the most unique in the entire franchise. You run around a level in a 3D-ish space, and have to blow up a bunch of UFOs. This is a really fun idea, but the last couple took me quite a few tries. The hitbox seems to be a bit wonky as well. I jump and it looks like Sonic passes through the UFO sometimes. Oh, and uh, also, touching the water drains your timer faster, which I'm only just now learning at today years old. I know Sonic doesn't like water, but wow, they really took that idea to the extreme. But at least if you're getting low on time, a timer UFO spawns in the middle, so you can potentially keep going for a bit longer. As janky as the special stage can be at times, it's one of the most memorable ones. 
I just love how exotic the backgrounds can get, and the music has this perfectly spiritual energy to it. As for the rest of the game, well, I sure did bounce around a bajillion times. I remember in the mid to late 2000s when it was almost impossible to play Sonic CD, and everyone always said that it was a super underrated gem, and now that it's easily accessible with multiple different ports, I can safely say that I disagree. Sonic CD isn't a bad game per se, but the level design gets overly confusing way too often. And the bosses are some of the worst in the series. All of them are brain dead easy. Even the final boss takes four hits, and what the heck, I'm done already? Yep, it only took oh, yeah. one hour and 26 minutes to finish Sonic CD. I did not think I'd be getting through this game so quickly, but hey, I'm not complaining. And we have made infinite flowers. You're too cool! Wow. If only that were true. So of course, we're on to Sonic 2. To 100% this one, we need to find all seven Chaos Emeralds. Yeah, get used to hearing that a lot, because Sonic really likes shiny things. So, I always go back and forth between Sonic 2 and Sonic 3. It's still highly debated on which one's the best, but I think Sonic 2 has a slight edge. Everyone considers Sonic 3, as well as Sonic & Knuckles, as one game. You actually get yelled at if you say otherwise. So, in doing so, half of Sonic 3's levels are slow and tedious. Sonic 2, on the other hand, is a smaller game, sure, but just about every zone has fantastic flow and catchy music. Well, everything except Metropolis. That one still sucks, and nobody likes those freaking grasshopper guys that throw the arms at you. And then there's the damn starfish. Like, I could go on for a while, but we already know how it all works. Even so, Sonic 2's fantastic and has aged quite gracefully. But moving on to the special stages. What's nice about Sonic 2 is that I don't feel like I have to play the game in slow motion. I just need to get 50 rings and then run into a star post. This is significantly easier than playing to the end of a level, and I can even hit multiple star posts in one level to get multiple emeralds. And now we have the famous half pipe where you have to get a certain amount of rings or you fail. When I started Sonic Origins, I was hoping I could just play as Sonic for the entire run. But apparently, the story mode by default gives you Sonic and Tails. There might have been a way to swap them out, but the only reason I care is because Tails can make the special stages a lot harder. The later stages can be incredibly tight, forcing you to not only get most of the rings, but also avoid the large bevy of spikes that cover the ground. But thankfully, since I'm playing Sonic Origins, the field of view is much greater than the original version on the Genesis. So that means the reaction time is a little more forgiving. But even so, I was struggling on some of these stages. Tails jumps like five years after you, so it's really easy for him to hit spikes, which makes your overall ring count go down if he's holding onto rings of his own. But after a bit of attempts, I managed to get all the emeralds and could finally use Super Sonic! Wow, a good reason to actually collect all the emeralds! And you also get this cool picture right before the credits, and wait a second, I'm done already again? What? Hold on, how did I only spend one hour and 43 minutes to 100% this? I genuinely thought I was going to be stuck on the special stages for way longer, but I guess not. So now we'll check out Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Fun fact, this is actually the first video game I ever beat. I remember playing this on my computer when I was like 5 or 6 years old, and I would basically get up at like 4am to play for an hour, and then as soon as I heard my mom's footsteps coming downstairs, I'd turn off the computer and pretend I had just woken up. The disc also looked like this if you were curious. But anyway, to 100% this game, I need you to say it with me, find all seven Chaos Emeralds! But that's not all, I also need to find all seven Super Emeralds. You'll get these by finding the big rings hidden throughout all the levels, which is by far the best method for accessing the special stages. Sonic 3 is probably my most played Sonic game. I've always adored this one. Everything about it is vastly improved, whether it's the graphics, the new elemental shields, or adding in mid-bosses. There are a couple of downsides, however, to the Sonic Origins version. Well, mostly just one. Some of the stages have different music due to licensing reasons, and the replacements are nothing special. It's a true shame to not be able to hear Ice Cap Zone, which is exactly why I'm playing it for all of us right now, because this song is jamming. But then there's the Sonic and Knuckles levels, and these are a bit more of a hit and miss. Once you get to Sandopolis Zone, the game slowly starts to crack a bit. Each level has all these new gimmicks that are just boring, and the bosses, while admittedly are creative, aren't very fun to fight. Sonic 3 and Knuckles' biggest strength combined comes down to the emeralds themselves. You'll get the Chaos Emeralds in the first half of the game, and then in the second half you get the Super Emeralds. What's the difference though? Well, you get Hypersonic instead of Supersonic. 
which is basically the same thing, but he flashes from white to yellow. So not really that different, but it's still kind of neat. I also don't have much to say about the special stages. It's blue spears, and they're all incredibly easy. The main reason this game took longer compared to the other ones I've already played is just the vast amount of stages. But after taking out the final boss as well as the secret one, Sonic 3 was done. I managed to 100% oh, it in yeah. 3 hours and 18 minutes. So not too bad for what's essentially two games in one. So by some miracle, I still had time to continue and moved right away to Sonic Advance. To 100% this one, I need to find all seven Chaos Emeralds with any character and beat the game with all four characters. You heard that right. I actually have to play through this game four times to 100% it. This is required to unlock the Moon Zone, which is the secret boss at the very end. Now, I definitely wasn't planning to fully beat Sonic Advance today, but I might as well make a bit of headway, so I started things off with Sonic to get a feel for the game again. Sonic Advance is another game that I grew up playing constantly. I spent countless hours playing this on long road trips and have a lot of fond memories. For the first run, I didn't even bother going for Chaos Emeralds. Since you can get them with any character, I decided to save the Emeralds for when I played with Tails since he can just, you know, fly everywhere and make getting to the special stages much easier. So I was just having a good time reminiscing on how much I used to love playing this. And I think Sonic Advance has aged pretty well for the most part, although the bottomless pits can be quite annoying at times. And there's a little bit of a screen crunch, but the game itself usually isn't hindered from it. I struggled a bit with the Cosmic Angel Zone boss, as well as the X Zone final boss. It took me a while to realize that the final boss is actually really easy if you figure out to just stand as far away from him as possible. But that took me some time to figure out. After a bunch of deaths, I finally beat the game as Sonic, and I still had some energy to keep going, so I decided to start the Knuckles run. He was slightly easier to use just because he can glide and climb up walls, but in general, it was about the same difficulty. I got fairly far, but didn't quite finish his run before heading to bed. the next day has begun, and I came to a really weird conclusion. This is the fourth 100% marathon I've done this year, and I think after all this time, I've finally gotten used to what it's like to do this. 12 hours a day doesn't feel that long anymore. This has started to become second nature to me. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but for the time being, that's great because I'm gonna need this energy. But moving on, the Cosmic Angel Zone boss was much easier compared to Sonic since I could cling onto walls to help avoid energy balls and spikes. And the final boss also went over a lot better since I, you know, knew what I was doing. So it was time to start the Tails run. Before we continue on, however, I need to thank today's sponsor, Disney Speedstorm. I had no idea what I was in for when starting this game up, but I was pleasantly surprised with how well the game controls. Immediately, it just felt right. The environments are really well detailed and truly sprawling. The map inspired by Pirates of the Caribbean was probably my favorite of the bunch. You start off driving on the actual ships, which is pretty cool in itself, then you'll make your way to the beach, and then out of nowhere, there's a battle of ships happening and you just drive through the entire thing, it's really neat. You can also customize your carts as well and upgrade your stats. Like, I can't believe how in-depth this game is. Season 5 has recently dropped as well, launching with a new racetrack inspired by Arendelle, and several Frozen-inspired racers like Elsa, Anna, Olaf, and more. As of September, the game has gone free to play, so you can try out Disney Speedstorm's new season, Let It Go, right now by downloading for free on PC or consoles and start racing with some of your favorite Disney and Pixar characters. Thanks again to Disney Speedstorm for supporting the channel. Now that we're back, let's talk about the special stages. To get to them, you'll have to look for a well-hidden blue spring. You'll bounce on that, and then you're taken to a 3D level where you're surfing through some sort of space vertex, and the goal is to collect a certain amount of rings. This is much, much easier said than done. I think a special stage like this would have worked a lot better on a proper 3D console and not the freaking Game Boy Advance. The hitbox on the rings are so insanely spotty and awkward that even the first stage is difficult. And if you lose, well, too bad, so sad. You're not allowed back in. You're forced to restart the level entirely. The trick to getting these special stages really comes down to memorizing where the rings are and trying to execute as well as possible. There are a few things that help out. Well, kind of. 
you've got this spin move that increases your hitbox and makes it a bit easier to hit rings, which can be quite useful in some areas. There's also these automatic springs that launch you into a row of rings, but for whatever reason, the spring doesn't work 100% of the time. You have to actually line yourself up with the spring correctly or else you might miss all of the rings. Needless to say, I spent a fairly long time on these stages, just because it came down to practice and figuring out the routing. It also took me forever to realize that if you spin through the orange circles, you get a bunch of rings for that. How have I never known that until now? After what felt like forever, I finally got through all the special stages and finished the game with Tails. That was incredibly frustrating, but now there's just Amy left. And wow, is Amy quite the contrary. She can't curl into a ball when jumping and can't even spin dash. She does this little skip thing instead, and her only method of attack is using her Pico Pico Hammer. As a concept, it's a cool idea to have Amy work so differently, but it also means you have to time your hammer attack before hitting literally everything. Enemies, boxes of rings, you name it. I was kind of worried that Amy was going to make bosses a lot harder, but honestly, it wasn't that bad. Once you figure out how to time the hammer, it just came down to being a bit more strategic with attacking. You can't just do the spamming nonsense like with the others, you need to actually be more cautious and plan out your moves. The only boss that was easier was the snow one because the hammer's hitbox is huge and I could easily spam him to smithereens. This ended up being a pretty interesting way to run through advance one, but I do wish that you could at least spin dash or even just roll down hills. There were a few parts where I was stuck in a big hill and needed to build a lot of speed to get across, but that aspect surprisingly didn't come up very often. After finishing Amy's run, I finally unlocked the moon zone. You play as Supersonic and have to take out the big robot guy. At first, I had no idea how I was supposed to hit him and kept losing, until I eventually figured out that you just need to dash into his head, and after a few tries, it was over. I 100% oh, Sonic yeah. advance in 5 hours and 20 minutes. Considering how long the special stages took, I'm kind of surprised it was only a little over 5 hours. Next up, Sonic Advance 2. Oh, God. This is another game I grew up with, but never knew how obnoxious going for 100% was. In order to do this, I need to beat the game with Sonic, Cream, Tails, and Knuckles. I also need to find all seven Chaos Emeralds with every character. Now, why on earth do we need to do this? Well, it's the only way to unlock Amy, the boss option in Time Attack, the Tiny Chow Garden, True Area 53, and some songs in the sound test. It's a lot of unlockables, but it doesn't sound that bad, right? In previous Sonic games, you just need to collect some rings or find a hidden spring to get to the special stages, and there you go, you're done. Well, let me tell you. Sonic Advance 2 goes out of its way to make getting to the Chaos Emeralds as time-consuming and painful as humanly possible. You see these fancy-looking special rings? Well, we need to find seven of them for one act per zone, which equates to 28 different times. And if you die at any point during the level, the special rings that you already collected don't save. And if you are successful and get them all and get to the end of a stage, you get one shot at the special stage. If you mess that up and don't get enough rings before time is up, you're not getting a Chaos Emerald. So first off, just finding these damn things is a pain in the ass. So many special rings are put in spots that are high in the air and only possible to grab one time and never again. It's either that or they're just so well hidden that you'll never find them without some sort of guide. And do you know how easy it is to die in Sonic Advance 2? There's tons of bottomless pits like with the first Sonic Advance and there's so many spots where enemies or spikes will hit you just because you didn't see it coming. It'd be one thing if special rings were saved after deaths, but no, Advance 2 tries to be as cruel as possible and wants you to suffer. This was absolutely miserable to play, and I'm not gonna lie, I was beginning to lose my patience. Doing this with Sonic was especially awful because he's not that useful. He can't fly around like Tails or Cream can. No, instead he just goes kind of fast and misses rings all the time. Thanks a lot, buddy. I think I spent close to an hour on just the first stage, and this is just one character. I've got to do the freaking special ring hunt seven times with Sonic, and then times that by four to include everyone else. And I thought Super Mario Bros. Deluxe for the 2D marathon was bad. No, I think Sonic Advance 2 might be the worst game I've ever tried to 100%. And what's frustrating is this could have so easily been circumvented. If they just allowed us to keep rings near death, 
and maybe allow fast travel from checkpoint to checkpoint, that would have been so much better, because then you could at least give yourself a retry to get rings that you missed. Due to how big the levels are, it almost feels like I'm playing a Metroid game where I have almost no useful abilities to get around and no clues as to where the special rings are. I was constantly pausing and checking a video guide because there was no other way I was going to get through this. This is going to sound strange, but I was having some serious information overload. Because I was just following a video guide to a T, I could barely grasp or remember what I was supposed to do. You all know what it's like when you're in school to take some quiz, you go home and memorize a bunch of facts, or you don't study at all I guess, and then when the quiz is over, you forget everything you learned. Yeah, that is exactly what it's like to get the star rings in Sonic Advance 2. But thankfully, the special stages themselves aren't too bad. You run around in a 3D room collecting rings, and the hitboxes are much more forgiving than in Advance 1. If you collect rings fast enough, you can build combos and make the rings you get worth more. There's not much else to say beyond that, although stages 6 and 7 get really damn tough. The only thing that was annoying about these was that you constantly have to hold up to move forward. Which, I mean, duh, of course, that makes sense. But you need to make very fast left and right turns to get rings in succession. So it was difficult to do consistently. So I found that by using my right thumb to hold up and my left thumb to push left and right, it was easier to maintain a consistent speed. Man, was I struggling. Halfway through the game, I was getting really mad at how frustrating it was to get the special rings. So after like an hour or so, I took a small break and got some some tea and just sat in silence. I fired up some Spotify and YouTube videos and was making progress a little bit faster this way. I don't know what it is, but throughout the marathon when I wasn't listening to the game itself, I was able to focus a lot better. Maybe it had to do with the fact that I wasn't thinking so much about how hard it was to get these star rings, and I was more focused on either the music or random videos. But after quite a few hours, I finished the game with Sonic. But of course, I wasn't done yet. It was time to move on to Tails, and thankfully he can fly, which made getting star rings a little bit easier. I still had no idea where most of them were, so it was a lot of pausing to check the guide and inching my way forward just like last time, but just the fact that I can fly it was amazing, because a lot of hard to reach star rings were accessible with backup flight. So after several more hours, I finished the game with Tails and unlocked the sound test! Wow, that was so worth it. But I still have a bit of energy to continue. At this point, I was on a call with a couple friends, and I was just moving along while playing. I decided to start Cream's Run next because why not, and I played a couple of zones before ending for the night. <laughs> Oh boy, I can't wait to play more Sonic Advance 2. Man, I am just so excited. Oh, I can't even explain. Even though Cream can fly, the flight time itself isn't as long as Tails. This made a handful of star rings harder to grab, but it was still useful in a lot of areas. But the best part by far is Cheese, because this little chow makes every boss fight an absolute joke. Cream calls Cheese out on the battle line and will automatically hit any boss it sees. It's hilarious that we can do this, and very satisfying after struggling through this game. <laughs> Uh, okay? How did I break the game? Dude, I can't even jump. I'm just stuck running for an eternity. I wasn't really sure what to do, so I just let the timer run out, and once I died, I spawned at the final boss. Oh, thank God. You know, maybe the final boss was just really far away and it wasn't actually a glitch. I mean, it's, it's, it's possible. But anyway, I cheesed the boss with cheese, and I unlocked the ability to replay bosses in time attack. Wow! Now to just beat the game with Knuckles. I don't really have much to add at this point, but I will say that he kind of felt like Sonic 2.0. There were some times where the gliding and climbing helped, but it wasn't as often as I was hoping. But considering that this was my fourth run in, I was actually starting to memorize where some of the star rings were, and it didn't feel as daunting. After some time, I beat the game yet again as Knuckles and finally unlocked me! Er, no, Amy. Uh, okay, I don't know why Amy is talking to me directly, but you know what? She's actually kind of cool to use now, because she can curl into a ball which makes her playable. So all that's left to do now is True Area 53 with Super Sonic. It looks exactly like the Sonic Advance 1 extra stage, but it works very differently. Instead of hitting the head, you have to bounce back either the green energy balls or the laser thingamajigs. 
and this is actually like the worst thing ever. Oh my goodness, was this boss dreadful. It's so easy to get knocked around and be completely vulnerable from all the projectiles. And when you're vulnerable, you can't hit back the lasers to actually do any damage. And this happened constantly. Look, I think Sonic Advance 2 is a fantastic game if you're just playing it casually and not going for the special rings, but the fact that my reward for all of this effort is just some annoying supersonic level doesn't really make it worth it. But I'm already in this deep, I just need to play it over and over until I slowly get better at it. And eventually, I beat the secret boss and was done with Sonic Advance 2. This game took me 12 oh, yeah. hours and 6 minutes to 100%. Good lord, what a slog that was. I knew it was going to be rough going in, and I am glad that it's over. And up next is Sonic Advance 3. To 100% this one, I need to find 10 Chao in all the zones, find all 7 Chaos Emeralds, and get gold medals in all the levels. This is probably my favorite advanced game in the trilogy, and 100%ing it isn't nearly as painful. The 10 Chao are found throughout all the levels, and even hub worlds in each zone, and you only need to get them once for it to count. Once you find them all, keys start floating around all the levels, and those are used to access the special stages. It still took me a while to find all the chow, but it wasn't nearly as much of a headache, especially because of the team mechanic. The fact that you can pair any of the five playable characters and they all get special team moves unique to them is so damn cool. It really changes the gameplay and adds a lot of depth since you can customize your moveset. My favorite combo has always been Knuckles and Tails, because you can get a super high jump as well as just flying around. As for the special stages themselves, well, once again, you only got one shot at it. If you mess up, then your key goes away. But at the very least, it's pretty easy to recollect multiple keys, so you can try the special stages multiple times, technically. But they really don't get that hard. You're just standing on Tails playing collecting rings again. There's also moments where you'll go through a blue ring and start getting coins with a 2x combo, so it's fairly fun I'd say, and at least the ring hitboxes are more forgiving. So I just kept on chugging along, slowly grabbing all the chow and getting through the special stages. After knocking all that out, all I had left to do was get the medals, but it was already pretty late, so I decided to head to bed. I'm ready to go once again, still feeling pretty good about the marathon. It seemed like I was slightly ahead of schedule, which is great, but little did I know that I would make a massive mistake today. So all that's left to do in Sonic Advance 3 is the medals. These are based on how fast you play through a stage, so it's basically just like a time trial. I had no idea how fast I needed to go in order to reach the gold, and was having trouble looking up the times I needed. That's when I stumbled onto an IGN guide from over 20 years ago. This was the only place I could find that showed me all the times for all the levels. There's something really charming about unironically using a guide from like 2002 in the year 2023, so shout outs to whoever made this. When I was checking how to 100% all these games, not all the information online was super well documented. For Sonic Advance 3, I thought that I needed to get gold, silver, and bronze medals in all the stages. So that's what I was doing. I basically replayed all the levels at least two times to get all the medals. This took an extremely long time to do, but it was by far the most fun I had with the entire marathon. I didn't have to play the levels in slow motion half the time, I just tried to get through the levels faster and faster and it was really exhilarating. And then for the bosses, I used cheese most of the time and then just sat around, waiting until the timer was at a certain point so I could get the bronze medals. Huh, you know, it is kind of odd that I need to get all three. And uh, I didn't realize how badly I f***ed up until the very end. I was at the final boss, got a gold medal, and then next thing I knew, I unlocked the time attack for bosses. This was devastating. I didn't have the bronze medal yet for the final boss, yet I unlocked the boss time attack that I was trying to unlock. Because apparently, I only needed to get gold medals in all the stages and not get all three of them. And I'm only just learning this after getting all three medals in the entire game. Oh dear God, I just wasted at least a few hours replaying stages way more times than I needed to. So now I have no idea if I have a chance of finishing this challenge on time because of this mistake. 
but I can't think about that right now. At least I unlocked everything I needed to unlock and just needed to finish the extra zone. This time, we teamed up with Eggman to take out Ultimate Gemeral, which is really damn neat. The idea is to kind of throw Eggman at Gemeral to attack, and it's really funny to look at in hindsight. But once again, it's another annoying level. You constantly get bombarded by projectiles, so you have barely any window open to do damage. I was also getting really fatigued in general, so having to play this wasn't sitting well. After taking him out, I beat Sonic Advance 3 in 12 hours and 19 minutes. Man, I definitely could have saved at least 3 to 4 hours if I solely went for gold medals, but there is only so much I can do about that. Might as well just move on to Sonic Rush. To 100% this one, I need to find all 7 Chaos Emeralds with Sonic and finish Blaze's story as well as the Extra Zone. And that's it. They simplified the unlock requirements a lot compared to the Sonic Advance trilogy. I feel like the discourse for Sonic Rush flip-flops all the time, but I've always found it to be a really great game. It's another one that I grew up with. I still remember getting it for Christmas when I was like 12 years old and being completely enamored with it. I thought the gameplay on the top and bottom screen was so cool, although looking back it's kind of tacky. But I still love this game to pieces. The music absolutely kicks and the new boost mechanic adds an amazing sense of speed. There's still too many bottomless pits, but the controls are so tight that they're usually pretty easy to avoid. Getting to the special stages is also incredibly simple. You just grab this handle and then boost for like 3 seconds. You'll be warped to the special stage, and these are some of the best in the entire series. Using the touchscreen, you move Sonic to collect rings and avoid the spikes. What makes this so awesome is just how responsive the controls are. By the end, the spikes are plastered all over the screen, and it never feels unfair when you get hit by something because of how accurate your control is. It's just great all around. This is the game I needed after suffering through Advance 2, and even Advance 3 to an extent. The only thing I really struggled with was the final boss. If you've played it before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This boss has some of the most irritating attack patterns, and they take tons of practice to avoid. And if you get hit too often, not even rings will save you, as they'll keep flying higher and higher into the air to the point where you can't recollect them. This boss took almost an hour to beat, but I ended up knocking him out and started Blaze's story. The only real difference here is you play the levels in a different order, and she has this floating ability. So it's nice that she plays a bit differently, but otherwise it's all the same levels. I somehow managed to beat her entire campaign and decided to end for the night. All that was left was the extra zone, but I was white. Man, I am never doing two back-to-back -back marathons like this ever again. This was way too much to handle, and that's saying a lot coming from me. For some reason, I woke up at 5am and couldn't get back to sleep. So I said screw it and fired up Sonic Rush. All I had left to do was the extra zone, so I knocked that out in about 20 to 30 minutes. Like the advanced games, it was just kind of frustrating constantly getting smacked around by lasers and stuff. I mean, it's a cool concept to be able to switch from Sonic and Blaze, but I just don't find these secret fights to be very enjoyable. It feels like the game is slowing things down for no reason, or maybe my brain is slow from a lack of sleep. Either way, I ended up 100%ing Sonic oh, yeah. Rush in 5 hours and 42 minutes. I also got one of the funniest ending screens I've ever seen. Congratulations! Accompanied with Cream crying and a blurry Sonic dancing in the back. Look, I understand what's happening, but this is so goofy with no context. Next was Sonic Rush Adventure. I've made a severe lapse in my judgment. To 100% this one, I need to find all 7 Chaos and Soul Emeralds, fully upgrade all 4 vehicles, clear all 100 missions, collect all decorations, unlock all sounds, movies, and dialogue, and beat the secret level Deep Core. That is a lot to do in a short period of time. Sonic Rush Adventure has always been such a mixed bag for me. I've tried to play this game quite a few times, but I always put it down after a few hours. But most importantly, does this cutscene draw any familiar comparisons? Hmm? If you were also thinking of Danganronpa 2, then you'd be correct. Alright, just, just hear me out, okay? Sonic and Tails are washed up on a beach. Hajime is washed up on a beach. <gasps> Sonic and Tails are woken up by a mysterious person, and they don't know how they got there. Hajime is woken up by Nagito, and you don't know how you got there. <gasps> 2D pictures of Sonic and Tails with Marine accompanied by lower third text, just like a visual novel. Danganronpa 2 is a visual novel! Well, there you go, guys. I just confirmed that they're basically the same game. So go ahead, share that with a random guy on Twitter. 
Also, I did finish Danganronpa 2, and I was just as hooked to that game as I was with the first one, but I won't go into that for now. Anyway, side tangent, my bad. I just, I'm, I saw it and I had to bring it up. There's actually a lot to explain here, so I'll try to keep things simple. The main thing we need to do is find all the islands in the game, as these islands have the levels. In order to get to them, we need to build vehicles. Now, how do you build the vehicles? Well, with materials, of course, just like real life. So you get materials for clearing levels, and once you've gotten enough for a specific vehicle, that's when Tails will build it. You need to build all four vehicles because they all travel different distances, while some of them, like the submarine, submerge underwater, and they're the only ones that can find hidden underwater entrances. That is the main gist of just beating the game, and it's very weird at first. It gets to the point where you quite literally have to grind Sonic levels to obtain enough materials for all the vehicles. It's a bizarre process for a Sonic game, but thankfully, the stage select shows you where to get specific materials, and the amount you get depends on how fast you play the stage. So the more you play, naturally, the better you'll get at them, and you'll earn larger quantities of materials. You'd think it'd be annoying to replay the bosses or levels, but I didn't really find it to be that tedious. It's silly, but the levels themselves are fairly well designed. Bottomless pits are much less common, and the themes are super extravagant and unique. The bosses are also much better than the first Sonic Rush. You can actually hit them multiple times instead of just once per cycle. So I was actually having a lot of fun getting through the main chunk of the game. The first thing I did for 100% completion was fully upgrade the vehicles, because yes, all four of them can upgrade twice. All the upgrades do is let you travel farther distances in the water, but it's a really good idea to do that first since it makes reaching new islands much easier. And I haven't even mentioned that when you're actually on the vehicles, you have to play touch screen minigames. They're not bad minigames per se, but it does feel a little tacky and unnecessary. But hey, when you get to a new island just one time, you can fast travel there afterwards so you don't have to play the minigames every time. After about four to five hours, I made it to the final boss and beat the main game, but my work was nowhere near done. I still had a lot to do. One of the most important things is to keep talking to all the NPCs, because a lot of them unlock missions that I eventually need to get to. There was also a guy where I had to give him a bunch of rings so he'd build decorations for the islands. Although strangely, you only need to give him rings a few times, because the rest of the decorations are built after beating specific missions from NPCs and then talking to those same NPCs again after beating those missions. I know, it's getting a little confusing, but the basic idea is play the game and then talk to all the NPCs every once in a while and you'll be good to go. The next thing I worked on was getting the Chaos Emeralds. To access these, you just need to find where Johnny is. Now, where's Johnny? Out in the sea, of course. It's some shark guy and he wants to race us. So we have to beat him in a race in order to get the Chaos Emerald. This is definitely the weirdest way to get an emerald in any Sonic game, but I shockingly love this. The races are exhilarating. You really need to put in the effort to nail the ramp tricks to build speed and stay ahead of Johnny. The races get gradually harder, but it never feels frustrating. The only difficult part is just finding him, because without this map online that just shows where everything is, I don't know how else you could spot him. So I ended up getting all the Chaos Emeralds and then focused on finding all the hidden islands. Once again, I just used a completed map online to do this and it wasn't too bad. Doing all of this is just super time consuming. But after finding all the hidden islands, I began my dive into the missions. At this point, I have played a few just to try them out, but a lot of them weren't unlocked yet, so I didn't go too crazy with it. The bulk of the missions revolve around a few different things. Do a bunch of tricks, get a high combo, find a hidden medal, beat the bosser stage with one ring, reach the goal by a certain time, and collect a bunch of rings. These are looped over and over for a bunch of the main and hidden levels. You may think this would get kind of monotonous after a while, but actually, I really like that these are included. Now, are these great for the marathon setting that I'm currently in right now? Absolutely not! But from a casual perspective, missions are a great way to add and expand post-content to a game. They may not all be super creative, but at the very least, they make you think about the levels you've played in different ways. I was able to get through some of the missions, but a lot of them were hard. And I mean really, really hard. I unfortunately was stuck on most of the time limit missions. I'd spend anywhere from 20 minutes to a couple hours each on just one. The reason they're so hard is because you're required to play as optimally as possible and basically memorize the entire level layout. The time requirements are insanely strict. It's hard to explain without actually trying the missions yourself. You need to boost at just the right time, take all shortcuts available, use the R button jump perfectly, and don't mess up ever. 
There's video guides I was watching online for help, but good God, look at how amazing this person is. Is this guy a freaking Taskbot? How can someone be so good at this game? Or maybe I'm just really bad. It's probably a bit of both, but either way, this was a big problem. I still had five games to tackle, and there's only two days left. The time was ticking, and I was feeling less confident about being able to complete this challenge. I finished around half the missions, and then called it for the night, hoping the next day would go over better. Today determines if we're gonna 100% all the 2D Sonic games or not. I need to 100% Sonic Rush Adventure today and also complete Sonic Colors DS. If I don't do these two things, I'm basically screwed. But I marched on forward and figured out all the problems I was having yesterday. Every mission that I was missing just came down to talking to the right NPC. So that was simple at least. The most interesting ones I played were all the touchscreen missions. These were super tough versions of the vehicle minigames. I actually had a lot of fun with these, despite a couple of them taking some time to figure out. It's kind of cool that they gave them a bit of a nod in the mission mode. As for the Soul Emeralds, which I haven't really touched yet, these boiled down to completing certain missions. This is really odd considering the Chaos Emeralds have a bigger sense of importance, while the Soul Emeralds are just kind of there, I guess. But hey, at least they were all easy to unlock. So after getting the Soul Emeralds, I unlocked the Deep Core level and took out the Egg Wizard with relative ease. This secret zone is actually pretty fun compared to the other ones. You switch back and forth between Sonic and Blaze and just fire away at the Egg Wizard. It's nothing too crazy, but at least I'm not annoyed playing it this time. But that really scratched the surface for what I still had to tackle. The time limit missions were starting to break me. Either I'd spend 20 to 30 minutes on one, or I was so baffled and confused on how to get through it that I quit and moved on to another mission. I could probably spend an entire video talking about these missions, but I just want to bring up Hidden Island 16 as one example. This isn't even that big of a level, but the time limit is so strict and I needed to make the craziest ass jumps. All I could do was just press forward, mission after mission. I was slowly getting them knocked out and next thing I knew, I had three missions left. All of these were time limit ones that I've already been stuck on all day. I tried them all again, and I didn't beat them. I just don't have the time to build the skills to clear these missions. 51, 82, and 55 were all I needed to do. What do you unlock with these? 51 gives us sounds 13 and 14 in sound test, 82 gives us sounds 22 and 23 in sound test, and 95 is sound 69. Nice. Oh, and I guess I technically haven't done Mission 100 either, but that only unlocks when you've beaten the other 99 missions, and that gives us a Sonic Head decoration. It's now getting so late that I already know the fatigue is coming. The only choice I have is to start Sonic Colors DS, and maybe I could come back to Sonic Rush Adventure tomorrow. You want to know how long I spent playing this game? 18 hours and 7 minutes, and I still didn't 100% it. That's an hour longer than Super Mario Bros. Deluxe to give you a frame of reference on how crazy this game is. So, I begrudgingly started up Sonic Colors. To 100% this one, I need to find all seven Chaos Emeralds, and that's it. So, it's back to the basics. In fact, the special stages appear like they used to. Hold 50 rings until the end of the level. Now, we're not including the normal Sonic Colors game because that has a lot of 3D sections. While this one is entirely in 2D and is clearly using the Sonic Rush engine, so it felt like the right choice to include it. One of the biggest differences gameplay-wise is that you can lock on to enemies. I'm kind of indifferent to the change here because the game still plays pretty much the same. But, uh, uh, oh, oh, oh no. Oh, I completely forgot this game has red rings. And if you get them all, you actually unlock infinite boost, which means that actually 100% this game, I what? also need to get all 180 red rings. Just end me already. There is no way in hell that I'm also going to get all the red rings on time. And a lot of them can only be accessed by using specific wisps. And on top of that, this is still a Sonic game, so the levels are massive. A lot of these red rings are hidden well, and it's already so late in the day that I don't have time to do all of this. So what do I even do now? I ultimately decided to just beat the game. I didn't even bother going for all the Chaos Emeralds. I just played through until the very end. 
I'm feeling a bit defeated. Mostly because I wasted so much time in Advance 3, and the missions were just so tough in Rush Adventure. The only idea I had at this point was to finish the last four games tomorrow, and if I had any energy left, I'd maybe finish these last two. But hey, Sonic Colors DS is still a lot of fun. The levels are very well designed, and I like how each of the Wisps are utilized in really clever ways. The special stages are also great. It works the same as Sonic Rush, but you collect colored orbs instead. Outside of a random crash, getting through the game was pretty easy. There's only a couple zones required for each world, so it wasn't that many levels to tackle. I somehow beat the final boss, and at this point, I'm running on pure fumes. I am so mentally exhausted after struggling through Sonic Rush Adventure all day today, and I have no idea how the last day is gonna go now. I spent a total of 2 hours and 51 minutes on this game, but I don't know if I'll be able to complete it. With four games left, I had to start with Sonic 4 Episode 1. To 100% this one, I need to find all seven Chaos Emeralds. I can't believe I'm playing this again. I played it once in the past and immediately uninstalled it from Steam. That's how much I hated it. But here we are today, playing one of the most mediocre games of all time. There's a lot of problems with Sonic 4, but I think the biggest one is the lack of soul. Nothing about this game screams confidence in itself. Every aspect of it borrows from Sonic 1, whether it's the title screen, the levels, the special stages, and even the bosses to some extent. There's obviously a few new things, like your homing attack, and the fact that you don't roll down hills naturally anymore, so that's just great. And the bosses technically have new attack patterns, so I guess that's neat. I just don't know why the game is called Sonic 4 when it's just trying to be a reimagination of Sonic 1. But anyway, one of the best parts about this game is that it's short, and getting to the special stage is pretty easy. It's once again like the older games, get 50 rings and touch the big ring at the end. The special stage looks exactly like the Sonic 1 stage, but actually plays very differently. Instead of having the level rotate on its own, we have full control of the rotation. So in a way, this is kind of the best way to bring it back. And also, if you're about to hit a death zone, you can easily pause and restart, which is admittedly pretty awesome. But there were a few stages that I had to reset from getting hit by enemies and losing all my rings. At this point, after doing two marathons in a span of a month, I've officially lost my patience. I was getting really frustrated because I had to replay a few levels to get the emeralds. And the special stages themselves were a lot harder than I remember, especially the last one. Oh my god, the last one is so freaking stupid! There's so much bouncy nonsense that can easily knock you into the death areas. The only strategy I really had was the pause buffer, which just entails me depausing every few frames so I can be sure that Sonic was headed towards safe areas. Wow, that took a lot longer than I thought it was going to to get the emeralds. Oh man. What the hell, my game just crashed? Oh, please tell me it saved. Don't worry, the game did actually save. The final boss was also just the worst. I don't even think it's that hard, but I'm just so beaten down by this challenge. I think I lost to the Death Egg like, I don't know, five or six times before finally taking him out. And then the game was over and oh man, was this one painful. It took me two hours and 35 minutes to finish. This should have only taken me like an hour, but whatever, I I'm over it. So now it's time for Sonic 4 Episode 2, oh boy. To 100% this one, you have to find all seven Chaos Emeralds again. It works exactly the same as it does in Episode 1. Get 50 rings and touch the big ring at the end. Thankfully, Episode 2 is not nearly as bad as Episode 1. They fixed a lot of small problems with the controls, and the levels are a lot more creative this time around. It's not anything special, but it's improved, I guess. The special stages are a bit better too. It's once again the half pipe, but now there's a boost button. Ooh, neat. Dude, even the color scheme is copying Sonic 2. I really don't understand why Sega at this time was leaning so hard on nostalgia, but at least you can still retry as much as you want, and most of the stages are easy. Well, most, except for the very last one. To the almighty heavens, why is this one so impossible? Again, I could just be playing bad from fatigue, but the other six stages weren't a problem. You have to get so many rings here and need to use the stupid lasso thing with tails to even stand a chance at clearing this. 
The main thing I was confused about was the huge loop of rings. I had no idea how to get up there, until I realized that that's what the boost is for. Okay, so I just have to use boost, cool. So I tried that, and oh fun! The boost momentum is so clunky that I missed most of the rings. It is extremely vital that you get a large majority of these rings, because the last section of this stage demands 500 freaking rings! And you want to know how many rings are in the last section? Almost none! You just get some scraps. Now, yes, obviously, if you get the bunch of 8 or 12 rings in a row, you do get a little bonus of 20, but those are not only super hard to get, but it's still not that many. You have no choice but to go into this last section with at least 400 rings bare minimum. That is a crazy ask, considering the bulk of rings are in this janky-ass loop, and the rest are surrounded by spikes! I spent almost an hour on this one special stage. Man, am I even gonna get to Sonic Superstars today? I am astounded by how long the Sonic 4 games are taking to finish. I expected both the games to take like an hour each, but I did not account for how annoying the special stages can be. Something else I realized is that getting Super Sonic is kind of a huge waste of time. Sonic 2 and 3 have around a dozen zones if not more, and you can get Super Sonic really early in those games. But with Sonic 4, there's four freaking zones and you don't get Super Sonic until halfway through the game. So, yeah, I guess it's kind of nice that I can use him for, like, the last levels, but then the game is basically over by the time you unlock him. When I beat the final boss, Sonic 4 Episode 2 oh, yeah. took me a total of 3 hours and 42 minutes to finish. I can't believe how long this took. I really need to cook the rest of today. Thank God Sonic Mania was next. Finally, I'm back to a good Sonic game. To 100% this one, I need to find all 7 Chaos Emeralds as Sonic and unlock all 32 Blue Spear stages. The only thing I won't be doing is getting gold medals in the Blue Spear stages, because it's not necessary. There's a few modes I'll unlock by just playing and beating Blue Spear, hence why I'm not going to bother doing golds. But dude, I was so excited to jump back into Mania. I will never forget when this game came out. I was having the craziest goosebumps after like 5 minutes of playing. Finally, a new Sonic game that had perfect physics, fantastic level design, and really fun special stages. It felt like years since we got something really high quality from the franchise. It was truly a magical experience. The only thing I really struggled with was a couple of the special stages. Actually getting to them is easy enough, you just have to find one of the many big rings in each level, but they can get pretty tough. Or maybe I'm just really tired and I'm just playing bad. After finishing Sonic Mania, all I had to do was knock out the rest of the Blue Spear levels. As I was going, I slowly started to unlock the other modes and only got stuck on a handful of Blue Spears. Thankfully, it's really easy to retry these levels. I just kept replaying Green Hill Zone and jumping into the same three checkpoints. After a few hours, I managed to get all the levels and actually 100% the game. It took me 5 hours and 19 minutes. The only problem was that it was already getting late and I hadn't even started Sonic Superstars yet. So I got the game running! To 100% this one, I need to find all 7 Chaos Emeralds, beat the story mode in Trip Story, and unlock all the store inventory. So I started playing and... I realized the challenge was over. I got about 1 hour and 37 minutes into it, but it didn't matter. Even if I were to stay up all night and finish this game, there's no way I could complete the challenge. I do believe that if I stayed up all night to finish Superstars, I could probably do it. I imagine it'd take around 6 to 8 hours, but what's the point? Because by then, there's only a couple hours left, then I still have to beat Sonic Rush Adventure and Sonic Colors DS, which would take way longer than that. So, I just stopped playing, and that was it for the challenge. Wow. Trying to 100% the 2D Sonic games was way more ambitious than I was expecting. Some of this came down to just not being as prepared as I should have been, but it also came down to the fact that I think I was stretching myself too thin doing two marathons so close to each other. But I want to continue doing these marathons because I think they're really fun to do still, and they are quite compelling, so here's the deal. Next year, you'll still get four of them, but they're going to be spaced out every three months, which means the next marathon is going to be next March. And with that, thank you all for watching.